Hello and welcome in. My name is Drumroll Tony. I'm a streamer on Twitch, musician, and music teacher living in Seattle. And in this video, we're doing a piece of music that was requested directly in my Twitch stream tonight. Someone came in and they wanted Unicorn from Gundam Unicorn. And as soon as they told me it was by Hideyoki Sawano, I was like, yeah, we're going to do that because uh, I just really love the music that I've heard from AOT so far. It's been impactful and meaningful to me. So I definitely want to do this. I'm excited to hear this. Let's go. Before I hit play in the video, real quick, I should mention that the company Mono sent me this mic. It's brand new. It's only available for pre-order right now. I actually did a product review video on it, uh, the one that's out that came out before this video. And um, I really like it. I mean, I love my Rode mic too, but uh, it's kind of fun to use something new. So I'm going to use it for a couple of videos. But if you're interested, you can check that video out too. Okay, let's hear this piece of music. I am excited. Unicorn. Okay, interesting uh, intro there. The horn's very big and cinematic, very like, uh, uh, you know, very Hollywood, Hollywood sounding, what you're used to kind of hearing in a, an opening sequence. But the percussion threw me for a loop there because we had doom, ba, da, ga. But it was like doom, ja, da, ga. The triplets, like two parcels of a triplet on there. If we're thinking da, ga, da, da, ga, da, boom, ba, da, ga. And I was expecting doom, da, da, ga, which would be 16 notes. So that was kind of cool. I'm going to rewind it and take that in again. Curious to see where this goes. Okay, so before the brass gets louder, so now I kind of take back what I just said because we got the strings going. So it's very based in uh, twos and fours. So we're fitting over four. So really, that that ga ga. The triple, the triple, it really doesn't fit anymore. So I kind of think I just wanted to hear that. And maybe I just agreed with myself a little bit too much there. So I was definitely wrong. All right, let's go back five seconds. Here we go. Okay, that had a Sawano-ism there, uh, if that makes sense. Very characteristic of his writing with the way we break and then the layers come in and the voicing pushes and we ultimately have a drop point right there. I'm going to go back 15 seconds because there's just too much going on to really be able to catch it all. But uh, really cool use of um, entrances of different instruments to create kind of a uh, layered dynamic instead of like a crescendo where we get started at low volume and just increase. We keep adding voices that really thicken the sound up. It's kind of hard to take your ear off the piccolo part there. This the uh, really high woodwinds are screeching, not in a bad, sorry, screeching is about like a, a negative descriptor. They're really prominent. I would say they're they're cutting through the rest of the sound and the brass sound is so, so thick in the lower layers of this like really loud uh, dynamic of percussion there. But still, you're hearing that upper woodwinds. We'll go back five. Keep going here. Okay, sorry. This field change is throwing me for a loop. I need to go back and listen to this again because I was like, wait, did we go to 6-8? What changed here? Am I just hearing like a cool accent pattern? That's Are we still the same? And it's just like messing with us because it's like written with cool phrasing? I can't tell yet.
So when something is like funky like that, where there's a bunch of really well written um, phrases that are it's it's happening at the same time, but they're kind of like they're not lined up at all. You want to break it down to like the lowest common denominator, and we can hear that shaker patter going. So at least we know we have those moving notes that are like the rhythmic glue. So at that point, I'd want to see the chart so I can say, okay, I want to see the brass line. I want to see the percussion line, how it relates to that and see like the middle harmony line to see how this is all flowing. Because right now, just at face value, like it perceived rhythm and perceived uh, harmonic like movement, it's it's actually pretty confusing to figure out. So I'm going to go back five and let it go. So I, I got to go back to, I just want to get it like, I can't quite tell what's going on. I just need to hear it one more time. I didn't get it. Hmm. Nice playing. Yeah, you can never go wrong with like breaking away and adding piano with strings and just super legato, smooth movements. I always explain to my students when I'm like teaching what legato is, I'm like visualize a stream, water moving over the rocks, super smooth. That's like, that's just the style of what I hear when you hear that kind of stuff. And it just goes really well with keyboards. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still thinking about that previous section. with that. I don't know what groupings those were, but... It was really good writing. I'm going to go back five seconds and we'll keep going here. So a little bit more of a minor feel or just like a, at least a tonality change here as we get into this section. We'll go back 10 seconds and grab that again. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Upper woodwinds happening previously. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Like knowing what hearing his other compositions and knowing what his brain is capable. This this all makes a lot of sense and to be expected of just how uh, great flow this is. <laughs> So right there, it really feels like it's in four because of the uh, boom, ba, ba, da, da. I'm not singing the right pitches, but you could really hear that string uh, part and the percussion part became less ambiguous. So that's one of the cool things about being like a drummer and percussion parts is you can have a part that's like super, it's very like tricky to the ear when there's not other foundations around it and you can keep the listener guessing. And I'm an experienced percussion player and I was still guessing and not, until I got that like foundation, I was like, oh, okay, this does feel very like uh, it's in four. Unless the previous section was something different. But also, who cares? Because like, it's just fun to listen to. It's like, you can sit there and geek out and trying to figure it out. Or you can just take it in, at, like, you know, not face value, but ear value, you know, at the site listen. So both, both are fun. All right, so we got to go back and hear that -da -da -da, the big descending brass line and the way the trumpets came out of that. I do. Sorry, if you're new here, I do a lot of rewinding. It's just what it is. We're going back 10 seconds here. Actually, 15. <laughs> So it was a really cool use of that, right? So we fall down with the big brass line. You have another different brass line resolve out of it. And then the strings take over and push past there. So that's called orchestration. The way like we're arranging the notes on the page. Like don't, don't get confused between the word orchestra and orchestration. Orchestration is like how you're laying everything out throughout the ensemble that you're writing for. So 
clearly Sawano has a very one of his strong points is the ability to take such cool uh, melodies and mix them in and assign the responsibilities and be very creative with the way he chooses to have everyone use them. So ideally, you know, you take that away when you listen to it because it's it's very, very cool. Okay, continuing on. Okay, so hearing the percussion isolated like that, it was actually super simple to listen to me like, oh, this is all that is. So it could be, if that had stayed the same the whole time, it was just like, gave almost a false sense of like a, a polyrhythm that really wasn't there. But uh, so, but when you took those other layers away, it became much more transparent. And then the timpani player that's been waiting this whole time, like, hey man, I got, what is it? Three minutes, like two minutes and 55 seconds of rest. They finally get to play at the end of the little piano feature here and bring us in. So let's go back five seconds. Ten seconds, we'll grab the timpani player again and into the next drop. So that shows you how important the timpani player is. And also, I will we're not going to rewind because a little bit, Bill, a little bit ago, but you should hit, hear how he hits that, brings it down, and then comes back. We call that like a, basically, it was kind of a delayed forte piano, but really, really good use of dynamics. And then we have, so far, the most climactic part of the piece where everything is loud and the choir is extremely loud. And it's very, very obviously in 4-4 time. And that groove is set right here. So very, very cool. Going back five, let it play out here. <laughs> I just can't let it play out. We have a cool little, we got this cool little hand drum thing here for like half a bar. We bring in the next horn line here. Here we go. Let's get this again. Okay, so you're very familiar with this point. But da 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 da. We get we hear this da 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 da. This figure and then big long lines. We're gonna rewind 20 seconds, 5, 10, 15, 20. This time, listen to the bop 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 bop. The staccato eighth note figure that's underneath that that is supporting that melody. You might have already heard it, but chances are you're probably listening to the da 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 that part. <laughs> That's loud. How do you make something louder? So we had that like phrase. It was already loud. Then it got even louder. How do you make one more climactic thing? You add in some crash symbols. It'll always be there. Make sure you take note of those. Go back 10 seconds. You can grab that crash. It felt really good. And the cello part there, that was nice. It was something close to that. Uh, you got you got to give it up for that halftime like percussion groove though, or like it was just 
I don't know. It's it's been underneath there the whole time. It's just it's very well written. Ooh, the unresolved suspended four chord. But, uh, but I think we just kept it right here. We didn't resolve. That's good. That's very cool. Um, I might be wrong on that. That's just what it sounded like at face, uh, face value first listen there. Um, what can I say other than I'm a big fan of Sawano? Um, I appreciate this recommendation so much. It was especially cool because someone came into the Twitch chat and wanted to talk about it. So I'm obviously primarily listening to him through Attack on Titan right now because I just finished season one. I think I'm on episode six of, of season two. I can't quite remember. I've been so busy with the Seahawks uh, drill mine lately and just some other projects, but I will be getting back to that. So obviously let me know in the comments what else from him I should be looking for. I do appreciate all the recommendations and everything else. Keep in mind, the easiest place for me to see your recommendations is definitely in the Discord though. So this has been a lot of fun. Thank you much for that one. My name is Drumroll Tony. I'm a streamer on Twitch. Make sure to catch me when I'm live so you can tell me about your favorite anime music or just music in general or even video game music. You can find a link to my Twitch chat in the video description below as well as the Discord. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can catch the next upload. All right, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take it easy. Bye-bye.